I'm working at CERN in the database team. I'm working with databases for more than 20 years, and I've seen all kinds of, uh, of software architecture for database application, such as everything running in the database or uh, outside of the database, client server, uh, free tiers, uh, microservices today. My goal here is to show you that it counts in terms of CPU consumption, and I think that the future will be to bring more code back to the database. So, a lot of demo. I'm going quickly there. I'm connected to a NoSQL database. Uh, we will see why it's a beta version uh, later. For the moment, I will just create two tables. Uh, customer, accounts. My goal is to show a simple transaction moving uh, an amount from one account to another account, and I will code that in different ways, SQL, PLSQL, JavaScript. Just let me put some uh, rows in there, 300,000 accounts. Here is how it looks like. They all have $10,000, uh, and I have 300 thousand accounts there. Uh, we'll see the number. Sorry, that goes too fast. No, I cannot point. Um, so what I want to do is uh, transfer money from one account to another, and I will do that for all of them just to see it uh, taking longer. My goal is to have a service for that, a procedure that will move an amount from one account to another and then call that for all the, uh, the other one. But first, I will run it just with a SQL statement that does everything in a one SQL statement. I have a small script there uh, that will just count the, the CPU time spent by the processes. In SQL, I want to move all uh, $1 from all accounts to the first one. So I can just do two updates. All the other accounts except the first one I uh, take one dollar from them, and for the first one, I put one dollar uh, multiplied by the number of accounts there. So this is fast, running for 300,000 accounts, three seconds of CPUs. The problem with that, uh, that's hard to maintain, because I need to create a SQL statement for each case. What you want is a small service, a small procedure, a small function that does one amount from one account to another and then call it with a, a procedural language. So first, because I'm connected in the database, I will do that with PLSQL. I roll back everything just to start with the same thing. I will create a PLSQL pr procedure, so the procedural language in the Oracle database. Very simple. If I want to transfer an amount from one account to another, I just update one uh, where I decrease the amount and update the other one. So that's quite simple, but the advantage of the procedural approach is that if the business logics are more, add more things, like taking a commission or something like that, it's easier to put it in a, in a procedure than in, in uh, all the SQL statements. So let's run in with the same uh, timing. So I run that with a loop on all accounts and I call my transfer function there. Uh, on the bottom, I'm running top, where you can see that I have only one process running here, 100% in CPU, because this PLSQL is running in the database. The data access and the procedural language are in the same, uh, in the same process. It takes longer than SQL, because even if it's in the same process, that's two engines, the engine for the PLSQL and the engine for the SQL and data access, and you have context switches between them, and that costs, it costs time, so we are about at 40 seconds there, and can check, we have seen 100% in CPU, uh, those 40 seconds are, are CPU only. So not really working on data, because I'm doing exactly the same thing as what I did in uh, three seconds before in SQL, but spending CPU cycles switching the context between two engines. So that's not bad. 
performance is not as good as with SQL, but probably you prefer the code, the procedural code, uh, like that. But then, you can do only PL SQL, and you probably don't want to do PL SQL for whatever reason, because it works only on Oracle, because the PL SQL developers are not so, uh, they are not a lot, so they are expensive. So now I will run the same in JavaScript, but from the client. My client is, here is a SQL developer, but it, it runs in Java, and I can run uh, JavaScript from there. So the idea here, I will just establish the connection and print the first uh, account just to see that I'm, I'm going with the same thing. I run that, so we are at the same status before. And here is my procedure, a function, transfer, an amount from an account to another account. That procedure will use two SQL statements, but for one account only. And the procedure will just set the values and execute those statements. And then I will call that in a loop for all the, um, uh, the accounts to do exactly the same as I did in PL SQL. And I will time that as well. And you will see that it takes longer. It takes longer because I'm not running within the same process. I, I still have two engines, the, the Java engine on my client and, and the, the, the database engine, the SQL engine. But in two processes there, this one is my session from the database, 80% of CPU, and the other one, Java, is my client. Here, I'm running within the same server, even the same Docker container, so I don't have the network run trips and all those latency in real life. That's worse if you are doing a lot of run trips between uh, different servers, different containers. You add an overhead, uh, network overhead, virtualization overhead, anything. So we can see that it takes longer and we have two processes running there, and one is waiting when the other is running. You, you, you cannot uh, optimize them to be fully 100% in CPU, because one is calling the server and then waits, and then the server gives back the result and, and then waits. Looking at the time, so that should, that is longer than PL SQL. In real life, this can take a long time or long time, but uh, I, I run it in the same server uh, uh, to get it faster. And I hope it will finish soon, because what I want to show you uh, now is that you can now, not now, but in a, in a few versions of, of the Oracle database and MySQL database, you will be able to run JavaScript within the database, also Python within the database. Oracle uh, owns Java. They are doing the, uh, the Gual VM uh, thing, and they have a polyglot engine on it, which can run any language virtually. They implemented JavaScript and Python, at least. And uh, they are trying to put in that within the database. Currently, that's in beta. So back there, that was nearly two minutes, and full of CPU doing nothing else than the updating the data that takes only uh, three seconds. And you can see, I roll back each time to get to the same state. The rollback is still a few seconds, because that's the actual work that is really done. All the other things are CPU cycles switching contexts. So let's close that and now look at this multilingual engine. I'm connected, so this is the, the beta version of it. The, it's a public beta. You can download the, the, the Docker container for it. It's uh, an Oracle 12.2 where they have added this, uh, this engine. And I'm running some DDL in the database to put my code. So very similar to the JavaScript I had, but I declare that in the database with a create JavaScript source. You can also do Python. <laughs> And then I will create a procedure. Let's, yeah. 
like I did with, uh, with, with the PL SQL, but this procedure just uh, uses this JavaScript. So I have a stored procedure written in JavaScript. And we will run that. I call run. For the moment, do not look at the elapsed time. It's a beta. They have, uh, the first beta was really fast. This is the second beta. They have added a lot of checks to, for, for these uh, callbacks to the SQL engine, and probably they will optimize that later. So if you look at the time, you will see that it takes longer, and also do not compare with my JavaScript that was running within the same server, because in real life, you run it elsewhere. The important thing is here is that I'm running 100% in the same process. I still have context switches between this multilingual engine and SQL engine, but not between uh, the different processes. The future, maybe they will implement other languages, maybe they will implement the PL SQL in it, maybe they will implement the SQL and the data access in it, and then you, you will have no context uh, switch at all. But uh, that's the future. For the moment, it's only in beta. Uh, the, the goal is really to, to, to be able to have the scalability running everything in the same process, but not constrain you with the languages. The goal is that they implement it in the Oracle database and MySQL. I don't know if that will go in the free version or not. Probably not. And JavaScript is quite, uh, quite uh, well implemented. Python, uh, not yet uh, completely in this beta. But this beta is from uh, last September, so it has evolved since then. Okay, I think it's time. Uh, didn't finish, but I told you that's a beta, and I'm sure it will be faster when, uh, when it, it will be done. Thank you very much.